Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're looking at Blackmagic Design's B-Raw benchmark. I want to see if the results there correlate with the results that we've seen over in the Puget Systems test that we did last week. But first, thank you! We've passed 2,000 subscribers. In celebration, woo! I stole some confetti from gargoyles at work. Thanks, Sadi. Anyway, I really do appreciate all of you being here, and I really like the community we've built down in the comments. I always like hearing from you. Please let me know if you have any ideas for future videos. This one came from one of our users, in fact, and that's why I'm running it. Let's check out the benchmarks. As a reminder, the two systems I'm benchmarking against in the Puget and now this video are my Thread Smoker machine, a 1950X with the 2080 Ti, and my Mini Me machine, a Ryzen 2700X with the 1070. You can see the full video above, but the results yielded about 185-186% increase in performance on the Thread Smoker machine. This is across all the codecs you see at the bottom, notably no B-RAW. Let's see what the Blackmagic Design B-RAW test has to say about that. And here are the results. On the left, the Thread Smoker machine. On the right, the Mini Me machine. This is Blackmagic's raw speed test. As you can see, it comes packaged with the Blackmagic B Raw codec. You get this and you run it. On the left, you'll see 4K, 6K, 8K result at different compression ratios B Raw 12 to 1, 8 to 1, etc. This runs simulated playback of compression ratio by resolution and frame rate to determine if a computer can keep up with playing back. You'll notice across both of these tests, the CPU is weaker than the GPU. That's one of the major reasons I think Studio is an upgrade that's worthwhile. The Studio license utilizes the GPU rather than the CPU for all of its encoding and decoding. Because the GPU test shows stronger performance, I'm starting there. Looking at HD scaling across this, you'll notice the bright yellow bars. Threadsmaker had 153% better performance than Minimi when it comes to the B-RAW 3 to 1 compression. This is a 1070 in Minimi versus a 2080 Ti. What's interesting, as the compression ratio goes up, meaning more decoding is required to be able to process the footage, the gap in performance goes down. So the 2080 Ti is unable to maintain its performance lead over Minimi as compression goes up. Interestingly, as we jump into 4K scaling, you can see that the performance gap remains almost exactly the same. 154% now between Threadsmoker and Minimi in the 3 to 1 compression ratio, and all the way over to 131%, which was the exact same number that we saw with HD scaling. So what this proves is the performance coming back relative to other systems matters more in the compression ratio of B-RAW than it does in the resolution. To understand this, I went back to the drawing boards. What you see here is my CPU utilization and my GPU util utilization. Currently, I am recording my screen, which is functioning inside my NVENC recorder uh, here. So that is the GPU load you see currently running. On the right here is our Blackmagic Speed Raw test. And now I'm going to click it. What you'll notice, the CPU jumps up with the CPU test. GPU holds steady. Now, as I move over into the CUDA core based testing, that was B-RAW 12 to 1, notice the CPU did not drop entirely. In fact, I believe it's doing some of the decoding for the CUDA core testing. This would explain why we don't have complete scaling across our GPU test. Because it relies partially on the CPU, and because the cores on Mini-Me are faster than the cores on Threadsmoker. Wait, 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 hold up. You're telling me a Threadripper core is slower than a Ryzen core? Yep, absolutely. You get more cores, you get different memory controller in Threadsmoker. However, the base core is the same. My Threadsmoker chip is a first generation Ryzen chip. My Mini-Me chip is a 2700X, which is the second iteration of the Mini-Me chip. And, and it runs at a more efficient instructions per clock, as well as at a faster speed. So this allows this to, in some extents, make up a bit for the lack of GPU in it, matching the 1070 against the 2080 Ti. This also shows us that if you're going to be editing B-RAW, the $1,200 GPU compared to the $180 GPU, whew, <laughs> it's not holding its own. 
All right, all right, all right. What does this show us? Well, this shows us that the Puget Systems benchmark is very helpful for the codecs that it tests. It also highlights the importance of understanding exactly what you're going to be editing when you're building a machine to work with DaVinci Resolve. In this case, the scaling that we see in the GPU with the Studio version becomes more important as you're using certain codecs. Those would be the H.264, the ProRes, etc. The scaling in those spaces holds linearly as we work across resolutions. However, when we jump over to the B-RAW testing, that's where it proves to us that a more balanced system to edit B-RAW, that is a better CPU coupled with a solid and good GPU, become more important. Seriously though, I never thought we'd hit 2,000 subscribers. I do like making the videos and I never really thought anybody would watch them, but it's pretty exciting. So thanks for being here. Thanks for watching and have a great day.